Good evening, everyone. Welcome to an old Cyclone Chaser Cyclone video update today, 22nd of March, 2015. My name is Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Tropical Cyclone Nathan made landfall this morning around about 9am in the morning at uh, just to the south of Gove and has continued to track in a west-northwesterly direction. If we have a look at the latest satellite track map here or the latest cyclone warning track map, we can see the system has continued to track in this west-to-west-northwest direction and is now located just to the north of Elko Island. The Bureau of Meteorology have changed their tune on this system. Initially, they were only expecting a Category 1 here. The system is Category 2 intensity and expected to become a Category 3, backed into a severe cyclone before weakening out on its approach to the Coburg Peninsula. In the meantime, it's going to create heavy falls of rain along the north coast of the Northern Territory. As we get into the 25th of March, we could be seeing a system that, uh, in its dying stages, ends up around Darwin. Now, in the longer term, some of the computer models are re-intensifying the system offshore and then continuing to track it towards the west, towards the Kimberley. So let's take a look at the six-day track forecast from the computer models. You can see here the, the life cycle of the system hitting Cape Flattery, continuing to the west, hitting a Gove, and then continuing to the west-northwest. Then a dip here to the southwest as a very, very sharp weakness in the ridge occurs, and then the ridge reinforces itself and the system tracks back towards the west. Now this is the most favoured, uh, the certainly the most favoured track on computer model guidance. You can see here a borderline category 1, maybe just under category 1 threshold out here to the north of the Kimberley coastline. The UK, the UK Met model has a bit of a dipsy doodle, uh, you know, spinny type track here that doesn't want to do anything. Uh, so it actually de develops the system and just uh, move, moves it around almost in place here over the next five to six days. Oh, look, this track appears unlikely, but the one thing that's interesting with the UK Met model is it nailed the initial track of Tropical Cyclone uh, Nathan much better than any of the other computer models did. So the UK Met model, while this track does appear unlikely, um, <laughs> really does appear unlikely, but it is a certainly a model that has, at least in, in the initial stages of this system, really nailed the steering influence as well. In this sort of update, we don't go through the steering influences. We just uh, mention what the computer models are showing. Obviously, in tomorrow morning's subscriber update, we'll go through and say why this appears unlikely. The experimental fin model is very similar track here. Dip to the southwest. This dip to the southwest ends up hitting the Coburg Peninsula on most of the computer model guidance and then tracks very close to Darwin. And that's, I guess, the issue that a lot of NT folks are interested in. This track very close to Darwin on the 25th. We'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. Exactly the same track on the FIM-9 model, which is a higher resolution version. The CMC model has a track uh, dip much earlier to the south around Manningrida and has the system crossing as a Cat 1 or 2 around Manningrida and then tracking inland across the NT and into the northern parts of WA. In the inland option, we see a lot more rainfall over inland parts of the Territory and the northeastern parts of the Kimberley. The NABGEM computer model has rain for everyone. It has the system tracking here to the west-northwest, then doing the little uh, the little dip here to the southwest, and then the new ridge reinforces. But the new ridge isn't as strong as the old ridge, and so we see more of a west-southwest motion, which keeps a lot of rain on shore. And last but not least, the European model, we see a track here to the west-northwest over the next day or so, and then bang into the coastline, and then really hugging the northern coast of the Territory, throughout its next five day life cycle. So we're going to see moderate to heavy falls of rain across the northwest and northern parts of the territory on this track to the west. If we take a quick look here at the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre's latest track forecast, we can see very similar to the Bureau of Meteorology system that intensifies to a borderline Category 3, uh, more likely to be a Category 2 on the JTWC, and then hits the Coburg and weakens out into a weak cyclone Category 1 intensity as it crosses uh, the Coburg and south towards Darwin. And you can see here the system lies fairly close to Darwin, 25th in the afternoon of the 25th, as a 35 knot system, which is a marginal Category 1. Uh, so we're certainly not talking a severe cyclone impact anywhere near the, ter anywhere near the uh, state's capital or the territory's capital, but we are talking a situation of fairly heavy rainfall with uh, some moderate to fresh, maybe even strong winds associated with it. The system then expected to track to the west as the new ridge pushes in underneath it, and you can still also start to see here, we see a re-intensification there by the 27th off the North Kimberley coast around Columbaroo uh, of a system around the 40-knot mark. 
looking at the ensemble models into the future, into the longer term future, we can see that the GFS ensemble is predicting that the system will track here continuously to the west. It's not really predicting too much of a southward dip, which is interesting. The, most of the other computer models are. Um, the GFS isn't. It's suggesting the system will continue to track west and loses the plot at around about day 7. So it loses the actual uh, intensity of the system. So it becomes a really a not or a, a negligible tropical low at around about day 7 here. So not, uh, not terribly exciting, the GFS model. The CMC long-term solutions are certainly a little bit more interesting. We have that track here to the west, then the south, then back out here to the west and possibly re-intensifying on a few model members and hitting the Pilbara coastline at around about day 7 to 8. So that's next Sunday, next Monday. On the Euro Spaghetti plot, we can see that almost all of the computer model members are in some type of fair agreement here on the track where the system is tracking to the west, then a dip to the southwest, then a continuation of a track to the west in the longer term. The interesting thing with the Euro is that any intensification is kept at a moderate level here back to around 50 knots. And so we're probably only looking at category 2 at most of this system according to the Euro computer modelling. And also you can see here the pressures rising and then really no intensification expected in the Indian Ocean. Now the JTWC is suggesting that this system could intensify in the Indian Ocean. All of the computer models and computer model ensembles outside of a couple of CMC members are suggesting that's an unlikely scenario. We're not going to speculate on whether it is or isn't. We're just here to give you the computer models and their take on things. The cyclone over the next few hours into the next couple of days will be tracking over very low wind shear conditions. So all systems should be ready to go for its eventual reintensification as it as it crosses the coast and enters the ocean, the Yarrafura Sea. No chance of dry air entrainment at this point in time. We're looking at precipitable water imagery suggesting, uh, you know, moisture values in the atmosphere of somewhere between 45 to 55 millimetres through a very large depth. All right, so tracking it over the next few hours, we can see that uh, by tomorrow morning, 4 a.m., it's located well off the coast, probably around Category 2 intensity. The uh, European here is what we're looking at, so it's not expecting it to intensify. Uh, in fact, if anything, the Euro is actually weakening this cyclone back into a Category 1 as we go into Monday afternoon. Now, the exact reasoning for that it seems to be the presence of wind shear. Uh, now, if we look at the wind shear values here, we've got values of 20 to 30 knots uh, developing particularly to the south and west of the system. And that is enough to halt the intensification of it and maybe enough to start weakening it as per the Euro model is suggesting. The other issue that we have is dry air. But as I mentioned to you, looking at the precipital water imagery, no chance of dry air. The Bureau were mentioning it yesterday. Uh, similarly, they were mentioning it before the Queensland impact, uh, and both times it appears that dry air won't be an issue for this system. All right, for uh, just to go into the future as well, Monday night and then into Tuesday morning, we see that southward dip. You can see here how pronounced it is, possibly re-intensifying re on, uh, on the computer model guidance here to probably around a Category 2, and you can see making a secondary landfall just to the east of the Coburg Peninsula. And uh, Manning Greta being located right in there, so you can see it's uh, it's expected to make landfall somewhere just uh, around the base of the Coburg or just to the east between Manning Greta and the Coburg Peninsula. And you can see here it's not expected to do so as an overly intense system. Um, the track maps from the Bureau do suggest Category 3 at this stage. The computer model guidance suggests Category 2 at best. Now if we continue to track this into Wednesday the 25th, uh, which is going to be D-Day for areas around Darwin. We can see the system lying fairly close here in the Van Diemen Gulf or just inland of the Van Diemen Gulf. And we can see it continuing to track here in a southwesterly direction. Now the system will eventually take a turn more to the west and that is as the new ridge builds in underneath it. And as it pushes back offshore, it might increase the strength of the northerlies here to 20 to 25, maybe even 30 knots, uh, not shown here on the guidance. Now, in terms of rainfall, it's all happening tomorrow in the uh, Manning Greta to Elko Island area in terms of the heavy rain. And that's in, with response to the, the system tracking in this west-northwest direction to be located just offshore. On Tuesday, as it makes landfall here around, uh, around Warawai uh, to the Coburg, uh, you're expecting to see, particularly anywhere to its east, the very heavy falls here. So 200 plus millimetres possible for the day. 
as we go into Wednesday and we're looking at that system now tracking towards Darwin and we're starting to see some moderate to heavy falls developing on the computer models around that uh, that northwest coast of NT. On Thursday that system will continue to track away to the west from from Wednesday to Thursday and so we'll see uh, really the uh, the really heavy falls being isolated uh, much further on that northwest coast. Now just be aware that because the CMC model, uh, sorry, the UK MET model is suggesting the system may do a loop-de-loop, -loop, we're seeing some fairly fairly strong rainfall echoes here, or some fairly strong rainfall totals here. They might be, uh, they might just disappear in the next rendition of this particular map because uh, if the UK stops doing the loop-de-loop -loop and actually comes back on back into the fold of the other computer models, we might actually see uh, this no longer exist. Depending on its exact track, we might actually start to see some fairly heavy rain developing on the Thursday around Columbaroo as well. Thanks for watching another OCC update, folks. We'll have another one for you on the 23rd of March. We'll have an OCC subscriber update tomorrow morning around the 9am mark.